1957 was when I got uh, drafted, and, and uh, I stayed in touch with Red, as a matter of fact, uh, when I was uh, taking basic training. And later, uh, I went on to New York City at the Army Pictorial Center, which is the old Paramount Studios, and uh, I served there with doing training films, and I was still in touch with Red. And then later, I got shipped overseas to uh, Japan uh, for the Armed Forces Radio, and then, uh, and then I did temporary duty in Korea, opening Armed Forces Television there. And so uh, Red and I were always in touch with one another, and when his son Richard, uh, I think he was 12 years old, Richard died of leukemia, uh, Red wanted to leave the country and entertain the troops. And unlike Bob Hope, he didn't take cameras with them and things. He just wanted to go out there and entertain and go to these small encampments throughout Korea. So he requested me from the State Department. I was stationed in Japan, and I was just a private, uh, and I got VIP status and flew on a United Nations airplane with Red, and we uh, went to Seoul, Korea. And then from there, we landed at Kimpo Air Base. I still have some photographs of Red and me. The place is pretty well shot up. And uh, he asked me to do his intro, to help him with the sketches that he did. And uh, we'd do, we, I'd come out and he'd do some patter with me in it. And uh, we entertained all the way up to the 38th parallel, the demarcation zone, entertaining in small encampments. Uh, and Red used to do a routine called Guzzler's Gin, and uh, it's a, a, a very famous routine. He's done it in movies where he's an announcer, and the sponsor is uh, Guzzler's Guzzler's Gin. And so he says, uh, "You got to try, you got to try some of this Guzzler's Gin." I mean, it's it, oh, it's, it's smooth, and he'd keep drinking it in between the, 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 uh, the, the show, you know, the commercials breaks that he'd have. So obviously, as the show goes on, he gets drunker and drunk. It's smooth! <laughs> he passes out <laughs> on stage. So we're doing Guzzler's Gin. So we, we'd call ahead at each encampment. We said we would, we would like a stool, some towels, and a, uh, a gin bottle. Well, they got, it, they got it confused. They thought we were knocking off a bottle of gin at every encampment that we went to. So they'd have some general there with a bottle of, of, of gin with martinis, you know, and Red and I are looking at, what the heck's going on with our troops here? All these guys are getting drunk. They think we're getting drunk. We just wanted an empty bottle, you know, so we could put water in it so he could do his Gustler's gin. <laughs> then we found out later that they got misinformation. It was that a bottle of gin, but a gin bottle. So uh, anyway, Red, Red did that routine for, for years. And then uh, when, when he finished and I had to go back to service uh, in, in Japan, a uh, little, little village called Asakamachi, uh, he said to me, look, when you get out, things are going to be tough. It's going to be hard to get your career going. You come and see me. And I said, oh, well, gee, that was very nice. I thought that was great. So sure enough, I... Uh, I'm still in the Army. In those days, when you got drafted, you had to put six years in. You had to put two years of active duty, two years of active reserve, and then two years of inactive reserve. So you put in six years before you got your honorable discharge. So I came back, and I was going to have to put in my two years of active uh, re reserve, and my father passed away. At that time, my mom and dad had moved to Phoenix, Arizona from Toledo, had this little house. And we didn't have any money, uh, didn't have much of an insurance, uh, so I was going to have to quit the business and uh, just help support my mom. So I decided, well, I'll stop by TV City, where Red is shooting his show, and say goodbye. So I walked in. He was so glad to see me. He had, this was just a very short period of time after I had gotten out, so he didn't even know I was home. and. Uh, he asked me what I was going to do, and I told him, I said, well, Dad passed away. I'm going to have to quit the business. He says, oh, you can't do that. He says, you're a doctor of comedy. He said, just like I am, you have your little satchel. And he said, I can't let you do that. So he says, as of right now, I'm putting you under personal contract. He reached into his pocket. He had a large wad of money, and he peeled off several $100 bills. He said, here, send that home to your mom. 
and from now on, you're working for me. He said, uh, you, I want you up at the house, up in Bel Air tomorrow morning. Uh, you can help me with the nightclub act. Uh, I'll, I'll get you some parts, you know, on the show and everything. So uh, it was Red Skelton that really saved me and, and uh, kept me in the business. I owe a great deal to him. He, uh, he, when I went into the Army, he gave me a St. Christopher medal to keep you safe, and I still have it. It's right here. Well, with my baptismal, <laughs> and uh, it's a, I still have it where it's on the back. He says, God bless you, Jamil, your friend, Red Skelton. So I still still have that. Uh, Red and I were very, very close buddies. And uh, as a matter of fact, when Red passed away, his, uh, his wife, Lothian, asked if I would like to be one of the pallbearers. And I said, what an honor. And I, along with Bob Hope and Milton Burl. Uh, was Paul Barrett at uh, Red's uh, funeral.